welcome to MSD at Home series. Thank you for uh, joining us. My name is George Stojanovic. I'm senior lecturer here at Melbourne School of Design. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, which may be multiple lands given the location on all of you, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. Now, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Luis Basabe Montalvo who is a uh, is associate professor at uh, Madrid School of Architecture at some. He's teaching design studio there and he's a visiting academic or was uh, uh, in the past at uh, various institutions across Europe, such as Milan, um, in cities of, such as Milan, Cambridge and uh, many others. Uh, together with uh, Enrique Arenas uh, Laorga and uh, Luis Palacios Labrador, um, they formed uh, an architecture practice, Arenas Basabe Palacios, based in Madrid in 2006. And since then, they've uh, won uh, more than 30 prizes in architecture competitions. There's also some built work to report, uh, such as a cultural association, a warehouse conversion, and a residential building at Salamanca district uh, of uh, Madrid. Uh, I came to know um, their work through European competitions, which are organized uh, biennially um, across many countries uh, in Europe. It's basically a network of uh, competitions, sometimes leading to implementation and realization of um, architectural projects. In 2009, Arenas Basabe Palacios had won uh, a competition in uh, Vienna. And six years later, the master plan has been approved by the city of Vienna for uh, approximately 1,000 residential units. And today the project is uh, either uh, completed or near completion for 11 buildings and 82 units. Um, some of the topics um, that we explore in Design Studio Epsilon, which is a capstone subject of um, um, architecture major in uh, Bachelor of Design, um, are very much related to what um, uh, Arenas Basabe Palacios explore uh, in their work. Firstly, we're interested how um, uh, they design across uh, different scales, uh, how they use rule-based approaches to generate uh, variety and complexity in design, and how they manage to dissolve architecture into a system and embrace multidisciplinary uh, approach. Uh, housing, I, I didn't mention that before, we're going to be uh, talking about uh, housing today and we will continue uh, the discussion that we have uh, started in the previous uh, MSD at Home events with uh, Christina Gamboa from La Col, uh, with um, um, uh, Osamu Nishida from uh, On Design and uh, um, 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 uh, Heide uh, von Beckeret, but also researchers uh, such as uh, Darinka Cischke and uh, Sofia Malsen. Uh, at the end of the talk, we are, uh, have some time for questions and answers, so please uh, use the, uh, the function available in Zoom webinar to uh, send your questions uh, as, we, uh, as we go through the event, and uh, hopefully Luis will find time in the end uh, to answer to those. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, ask Luis to turn his uh, camera on uh, and um, to wish uh, him a good morning. He's uh, based in Spain at the moment, so there's a time difference there. And uh, that will be all for me. Uh, Luis, please, the uh, floor is yours. Thank you, Jorda, for the nice presentation. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I really like very much the approach of your of your studio, as, as we were chatting, uh, how to uh, prepare this lecture, and and I will share now. And and I think I coming from what you said, I, I have prepared. Uh, it's not so much a, a work account, but it's a selection of a couple of works which could help uh, students, especially to to understand the way we we like to do housing areas no? and, 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 and these urban projects. No? We don't really uh, like to make a distinction between urban design and architecture because we think uh, it is just the production of the city in a, a very transversal way. So it's not the architect who is planning everything, but it's also not a, a lot of people who are planning really uh, different uh, sectors, but really uh, 
how should I say it? it's it's a it's a holistic uh, activity, you know. So uh, that is in this sense uh, that is the the title we use multiplayer city. It's going to the, the lecture is going to focus on 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 these processes. So I will very briefly start uh, telling you two more or less old competitions which were done at the same time as our Viennese project. More or less, they were like in three consecutive European editions. But I think they explain well the concepts which are behind our approach to the to the planning of, of, of housing areas. And then I will take a little bit more time explaining you this process, which as I was telling Jorde just before uh, the lecture, it has occupied, let's say, 50% of, of my time in, in, the, in the last 10 years, I would say, no, in the office time. But uh, I was personally very much involved in this in this project. Oops. No. So I like to. I, I love this image. No? This image is just uh, the plan of a low-income neighborhood in in Ahmedabad. This is a city in India in which I have spent a lot of time. And Luis Palacios, my partner, also we, we have been teaching there for one month uh, through many years now and, and it was really uh, nice and we discovered this kind of, of architecture in the early 2000s so that could be maybe 2005 2006 we discovered this kind of architecture which uh, in which life has overflooded the uh, the built uh, what, what we usually, at least in Europe, would have called architecture. No? So this was a really nice academic work made by Sunita Calzarilla, who, who was then teaching in the US, a very bright uh, architect. And, and she was uh, comparing, she, she did, took the original plans of this neighborhood, which was built by, let's say, anonymous engineers, but, but I think it, they were quite good planners because they understood or, or, or maybe it worked well, no? What was the essence of, of, of this kind of urbanity? And we see uh, how she recorded all these changes which were happening there, no? This is really a wonderful example of, of, of how life, uh, architecture, the, the left architecture is absolutely incomplete. It is already built, but it is only the beginning of what is much more interesting is what is happening there. I don't have pictures now. It's not the topic of the lecture. It's just the introduction. But you can imagine uh, the, the transformations we see on the right. Some of them are really just a small fence, but some of them are five or six stories added to this one family house. So it's really incredible how the city can live. Can live. So th this was for us in 2005, in which Madrid was growing with an incredible over planning of, of huge buildings and so on now we, we were in the in the boom of, of housing projects uh, this was exactly the opposite and then we found it extremely inspiring no? so we made it kind of uh, um yeah let's say an objective no how could can we really make cities which are not ready planned which are able to react then to the crisis for instance no we have now dead neighborhoods we were too big and, and have not been able to react to the changes. So sorry if I stop too much in this image, but uh, I really love it. We consider it in the office a kind of the flag of our office. No? So it, it, it's really it includes all the, the objectives which I want to show you in the in the following projects. So uh, very briefly, I will show you two competition entries with it, more or less, as I said, at the same time as the, the Viennese one, which I'm going to explain more. This was also in Austria. We won the competition, but it was never built and we were, it didn't really come much forward, more than a couple of meetings in the municipality. But uh, this, were our, this was our first uh, encounter with uh, European, Central European suburbanity. So this is what we called the diffuse edge of a diffuse city this, this is a, a railway line which connects vienna and graz they are two cities in, in austria the first and the second city more or less 
and it's full of these small nodes around each station you have a kind of village so there is now here a station which was made a bit later so they wanted to to do a kind of low uh, density development here in the middle of, of of this forest land it's really beautiful now so we reflected a lot uh, in this project and that is what i want to introduce i will show now some pictures which are not of the project about the values of uh, the values of, of, of the new citizen no? so we discovered uh, talking a lot we talk more than draw in our projects that uh, these values had completely changed this is i think a, a very nice representation of the values of of housing, what people could expect from housing uh, before the, 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 the two world wars, no? which were in Europe were really uh, decisive. They, they changed everything. No? I think this is Adolf Loos. Uh, this, this was the bedroom actually of, of his wife. No? And they had one, two bedrooms. I don't know how it worked, but, uh, but I think it, it reflects really uh, this, uh, uh, 19th century uh, values of uh, I would uh, compile them in comfort and intimacy I wrote there but it's really uh, something completely different to, to the this is American actually this is a, a drawing from learning from Las Vegas but made by a student of, of Dennis Scott Brown and, and Ben Tully but it's it's really completely different you not know? this world of, of, of the suburban in which uh, the values have completely changed. Now, we uh, thought the values of the suburb do not have anything else to do with, with these qualitative uh, ideas and, and dreams, which we could find in, in Adolf Loh's picture, but they have much to do with, uh, with intimacy is completely changed for property. No? Property becomes the main value and connectivity no? in infrastructure. Of course, this could be a much more complex text about these values, but we wanted to focus here on, on, on this objectual character of the new suburb in which dispersion and connection no? are, are creating a completely new kind of tissue in which Built continuities or spatial continuities are not demanded at all. No, so uh, this was as we visited uh, before while doing the competition. This side we found this really funny. Uh, it was part of a folder of, of a con local constructor who was offering to add all these plugins. No, these things. No, I think that the the concept of thing. Is really important in, in the suburbs. So the object is put on a plot connected by a street. Now, this is not what ha happened in the city uh, before the, the, the two world wars. No? So we decided to, to not to fight against the suburb, which was what we had learned at school. That was all bad, and the city had to become again something much more spatial but we said okay now this is the reality let's take this value serious and let's think how can we really create a city in which for instance community is able to happen no? in which the public does exist but which is built on the suburban values not denying them no? so uh, well, we, we were reflecting also about, about this, what we call the ex-citizen. It was the title of, of, of this competition. No? And, and we took him and her, we, we took them, the, the ex-citizens, serious. So that was a bit the, the idea of this first competition, which, which was the first seed of, of, of a series of ideas. We said, okay, let's go even beyond this a fragmentation of the suburb and let's try through this further step to create a new structure in which we can interweave a, a proper city so that was a bit the idea so we really dismantled the, the we do the, the opposite of, of that local constructor we said okay let's add things really things no let's add you you have your house which is really an object which you can see we, we developed 
a series of typologies no? In, with different heights. These are just the two smallest. No? But then we added the winter garden, we added the garage, and we added the, the, the garden as a detached element. This is going to be very important in our next projects, no? the, the garden as, as the symbol of the suburb, no? which is um, the garden has a fence, it has the, the, all the symbols of property are included in the garden. No? The, it, it, it's full of flags. No? In Austria, the gardens are really, the private gardens are really full of flowers. And, and they are really, if you make photos of them from above, you, you see they look like flags. No? They are little properties no? which are marked. So, oops. Sorry. So also the, 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 we included in this system, no? in this catalog of, of private elements, we thought we can include in the same language, the public. So we reduced uh, also the public to, uh, to, to, to the object which creates the situation. No? So, so space is something which happens uh, uh, well, this is not a, a, a dogma, no? I mean, now talking about this kind of suburban elements, space, public space is something that is mostly related to activity. And so, so we did these elements which occupy activities no? and, and were able like to, to create, and we were able to melt all of them no? in, in, in one system. So we brought the public and the private in the same language, in the same, so that we could write new patterns with this language, interweaving them and, and overlapping uh, things so that superposition uh, substitutes absolutely the fragmentation of the, of the convention. So only through detaching actually the house from the garden, uh, we create really something which is radically different to uh, the division of land in plots. No? So, so, so we thought it was really a, an inspiring idea. No? We, we like a lot all these experiments of the 70s of Van Graham with suburban houses. No? He did one in which he put one uh, wall in glass. No? So, so, or, or in this case, it is more subtle. No? He puts a television outside of the house in which you can see what they are watching inside. So it is really an in, intolerable uh, disruption of, of, of this structure. Not that, that you see what they are watching is, is really, uh, it breaks completely the whole system. So it shows its weakness. So we thought it was interesting to, to, to use overlapping and this kind of exhibitionism of, of, of needing to cross the public and, and, the, and the common to create a new tissue. No? On the other hand, no, this, this whole post-war society, which in Europe has taken not only this kind of suburban, but the suburban form, finds actually its public space in, in, in the voyages no, of, of, this is a, a, maybe an extreme example, no, but in television, the reality show becomes actually, it's, it's an example, a very dystopic example in which the most private becomes actually the most public. So, so we have examples no, uh, after the war, I mean, or in, in recent, so in contemporary times in which the public and the, and the, and the private are managing to, 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 to be, how could you say, uh, completely reensembled no, in, in, in your structure. So that is what we try. No? So this brought also a, a further vector we are going to see is this allows us also to, de to do urban tissues which are completely open to the process, like, like we saw in, in this Indian drawing, I will refer all the time because I think it reflects very good what we want. So, well, this, this, this drawing tried try to, to show in, in a panel no, for a competition how things can really change. So, so we think it's really nice if you do such a structure and you come 30 years later and you don't really recognize it. No? That would be like the best which could happen for, for a neighborhood made by us. No? So that was a bit this idea. No? So I think this was a topic. And, and, and then a couple of years later, uh, 
we did this other competition. We, we won it also, and it was never built. Here we did do some studies, but there was a political change in the municipality, so it was like the, the big develop, development proposed by one party, and then the other party came, so it stopped no? for some reason. This was in Sweden, it's a different country, but I would say on this regard, it has also it's a quite similar process of suburbanization. No? You, you have in the in the southern coast, no, you have this kind of like you see here, kind of continuous urban development. This is it has a kind of downtown somewhere here, no, but but actually it is a continuous structure. And they wanted to develop a, a new neighborhood which related this farmland with the city. This farmland is very fragmented and actually it is already used mostly uh, for some kind of in between between professional and hobby farming but it's a very urban element now there that is what they were describing in in, in the competition brief so i show this project because i think it completes the the the, the three ideas we developed at that time and, and which have flowed into, into, into our neighborhood. But here we discover or, or we tried to use uh, a structure. No? I think the critic to the first project would be that we are proposing uh, the objects, we are uh, proposing that they interweave in a, in a really nice way, but we are not proposing the tools to uh, create that tissue. We, we don't have a support. That will be uh, a, an important topic. I will show later some diagrams. No? But so uh, in this project, we, we decided to use uh, the square as a kind of symbol of community no? as the support, no? as, as, as the, the, the element which structures uh, space. No? So, so actually, we place this, uh, these squares. And we build around them. So we are not predefining the place of the buildings, but we are predefining the place of communities. You know? So we play a lot trying to change uh, the initially evident element which structures the cities. Normally, you, you come to a project and say, OK, let's place the streets, and let's do later the plots, and then let's put some buildings inside. So I think. It is a mistake. It, it can be OK in some cases, but it's a mistake to, to, to assume that that, uh, that is the only way. And if you change the, the, the position of, of these terms, of these factors, no? and, and you say, OK, now let's place first the, the, the public space, and then maybe the, the streets come later, and the, and the buildings come somewhere where they were not expected, then you, you have really completely different results. So I think it is important to place the support, the element which is supporting all this in, in, in its proper place. So uh, we understood that we were able to, 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 to create these small communities, small, but with different sizes, but they were at the same time, uh, that is why we call this project twin phenomena, taking uh, an expression of, of Aldo Van Eyck in a, a different way, but uh, 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 we were also creating, so, so these were not enclosed communities, that is uh, the big problem of, of communities do exist in the suburb, no? but they are gated communities. They are uh, absolutely unrelated units, which, which just, just float in, in the territory, no? or, 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 or maybe attached to each other, but without relation. We found important this other element, this second, lecture of, of, of the of the green to create the, 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 the element which binds this community. So you belong actually to, to two communities somehow. In this way, you belong to, to, to everything. So again, overlapping structures trying to 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 reach more levels of complexity and 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 a field of of a space no, in which uh, different developments can happen even beyond our own Im imagination, our own proposals. No? So 
At the end of this structure is also a, a tool for diversity. This is also a, another big topic in which we can have like relative big developments. Let's say we were thinking here about something about six to 10,000 square meter, no? Then we have smaller things uh, which small developers could also work. We have also places for cooperatives. They are not necessarily related to this scale. This is just examples. Or we could also imagine that we have small groups of individuals or even one family houses working well in the same tissue as uh, bigger buildings. No? So the relationship between uh, such kind of, of block and such kind of, of house, no? it's, it's possible and is desired no? by us. No? So, so at the end, uh, this is a, a very uh, folkloric concept, but, but we like to understand that uh, the city is something that is more related to cooking than to building, actually, no? because uh, we, we think always it's, it's like a paella. No? You, you, you put rice, and then you put uh, peas, and, and then you have some meat and some uh, shrimps and, and, and whatever, no? and some paprika and whatever. But it's really, it, it does matter very much when you put everything, how long it is in the, on the fire, and then how much water you add, if you have to add water later. So the process of, of cooking a paella, a rice, I, I'm sure you have in Australia other traditional rice uh, or, 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 or whatever, no? It's really important, the process in which you do it. So, so the city has much more to do with that, no? with, with preparing a good rice, than sometimes we try to design them much much more as sculptures or whatever. No? We try to, to do a cake no? or, or to place cakes on, on, a, on a plate. And I think the cakes do not have relation to each other. No? You take them one by one the cakes on a plate, but the, the, the rice is the rice is improving the peas and the peas are improving the rice. So that is our vision. So we did a, a small uh, video game for this also. No, I think you can, I don't know if it's, I think it, it was still active some days ago, but, uh, but uh, it was, uh, it's not a game, but it was a model, no, a digital model in which we also began to work with indicators no? to use the measurement how good the city is if i can measure the relationship of elements i can use it also as a planning tool no? so this is a little bit what what we're proposing here no? so i go now sorry if i no it's okay i so i will take the the last part of this lecture talking to you about this project. This was, uh, this is in, in the inner periphery of Vienna. So it belongs to the municipality, but it's, as you see, a, a place of really tiny one family house. These were actually, you know, allotment gardens. Uh, many, some decades ago, they were like uh, given for, civil servants of the railway and, and in this case it was like that or, or other uh, collectives you know and then they were allowed successively to, to build a small shelter and so and now they, they were allowed to build uh, some houses you know, in the early 2000s you know? so these places have become became extremely uh, tiny uh, fragmented neighborhoods which are quite interesting you know? this is even smaller this is one of the major cemeteries of, of, of Vienna, no? it goes a bit further to the, to the north. No? And then uh, we had here the railway, and this is an industrial area, but with a big potential, Vienna is transforming these industrial areas into productive neighborhoods, so not removing completely the, the industry, but introducing housing here. So it's going to be, let's say, a, an important uh, point. So we were asked to do this. This was a, actually a, a pig uh, farm uh, made by the Nazis that is quite horrible during the war to, yeah, to, to, to raise pigs for the, for the army initially. Then it was used in the 
post-war to raise pigs for the population. And then it became a research center for animal diseases, nothing serious, but normal, like they, they had some laboratories and so on. And, and then it was an obsolete structure. So, so, so we had to build there. No? So uh, how do you build on, on a green field? Because you see some buildings there, but as we arrived, they were not existing anymore. There were some fragments here. And only this area, we have uh, kept it. It's, it's quite interesting. It's an industrial uh, building to, to vaccinate the animals, actually, so with a ramp and so. And then two houses. So they, they were the, like the director and, the, the, and another house for other employees. No? And, and we have kept them. So, uh, we approach here a, a, a new topic. So we have talked a bit about the uh, suburban, the ex-citizen, as we call it. it is, and, and here uh, we added, as, as I already introduced in, in, in the Swedish project, uh, this is my, my favorite diagram, I, if I could say. I don't know if it's really banal to, to have a favorite diagram, but uh, this is from uh, Turner's, John Turner's book, you know, this housing, I have it in Spanish, sorry, but so it crosses uh, like the sectors who build the city, you know, the public, the private, and the popular. It is a simplification, but it's okay, no, with the, the, the actions, no, planning, building, and, and managing the city, no. And uh, he's showing here the diagram of a, let's say, an informal settlement, you know, that would be on the left, and this would be let's say, a Soviet, uh, you know, uh, 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 how do you call them? These uh, neighborhoods, the uh, micro rayon, no? Or something like that, no? A Soviet neighborhood in which everything is done by the state or whatever, no? So, and uh, what do I like very much from this simplified diagram? I think it is already telling, uh, let's say, like that, 90% of what, you have to say about these two neighborhoods. The rest is only architecture. Sorry if I make the joke, but, but I would say the rest, here we have already decide, decided if we can use concrete, probably, for instance. No, we have already decided if we, which kind of energy distribution or, or which kinds of energy distribution we, we can use. Here uh, we will we have already a lot of information about the image or if it's going to be a, a unified in the image or if it is going to be a more critic. We have a lot of things already through the understanding of the question who makes the city. So that is for us an obsession also in, in the design studios and so to ask ourselves who is making it, who is making the city. And we will have the, the, the our our idea is also that a democratic city is really only democratic when we manage to create a balanced, uh, diverse diagram, no, like this, of our corresponding neighborhood. No? So for this, we use, I introduced also these two concepts in, in the Swiss project, but here we, we, we worked a lot with them. The, the concept of, of, of Habraken, no, of the support plus infill. So I think it's important that we know that there is always, if we want it or not, there is always a line, or it's a complex line, a multidimensional line, okay, but it, let's represent it as a line which separates what we control and we do not, what we do not control of, of, of an urban development. No? And if we are aware of that, we can use it as, as a design tool. So, uh, we, Habraken brings the example of, um, of the road system, no? which he says the road system is not only the roads, it's the roads plus the petrol stations, plus the cars, plus whatever. No? And, but they are not built all of them with the same logic. So there is not uh, somebody who says, let's build the road system and they build the roads and all the cars at the same time. But it is a system with different velocities and what we find more interesting with which is able to involve many different actors so let's say 
uh, that the state is building the road, even the, the road system has many actors. You have, at least in Spain, we have like some roads which uh, belong, which are built by Spain, by the government of Spain. Some others are built by the different regions. Some others are built by the municipalities and so on. But then the, 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 the petrol stations are built by, uh, by, by the market, actually, no? in, in our case, there are some few which are public, but. Uh, and then the cars are built by another completely different structure of, of so, so you, you have everything, you have a very complex system with many different actors. So I think this is a key topic in our work. No? This is just an image to visualize that. No? So you have uh, structures which really have a, a very clear support, which is able to host uh, a, a huge diversity, not only of, of results but what we find more interesting are a diversity of producers of people who are building this city you know this is of course manhattan no so this is what we did so that is why i, I wanted to introduce the other project so we discovered the, the garden we wanted to work more with the garden so we took the garden the private garden this kind of detached private garden as the the the, the symbol of the suburb and we uh, used it as, as the element which creates the support of our neighborhood. No? And then uh, the buildings was something which came afterwards as, as a really as an infill, something that could be made by different people. And it was not important how the buildings looked like in order to have this neighborhood working. No? So this is just to underline the importance of the garden. So we created this is. Uh, from the competition, I put it because, well, the, the rules became then a bit more multidimensional, but this was like the, the idea of defining this architecture through an object, but the object is not the architecture, the object is the garden, no? a fenced garden, and through some rules, places and amounts and so on, no? in which you are able to build. No? So this created a support in which, for instance, individuals were able to, 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 to build some houses. And in fact, there are individual houses in the neighborhood. Also, we were very interested in, in co-housing projects, which are now important in Vienna and, and, and other kinds of cooperatives. So it was a flexible support for larger structures. It is also a support for private developers, we believe, uh, private developers, I don't know in, in Australia, but in Spain for students of architecture, they are like the enemy, no? you know, they are the caricature of, of greedy people, but they are, we understand uh, the good private developers are the key for, for, for a good urban development, no? more than the, the architect actually. No? So, so I think we gave here space for really uh, bigger developments we, which were economically more sustainable. No? They are very important, for instance, to create, to make affordable the other houses of smaller units. No? And also, uh, even the public you know, was able to, 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 to take roles here more in the, in, the, in the whole, and also to understand this whole patchwork as a, an enclave in which different uh, elements could, could take pla place even uh, interrupting this this uh, element. So this was the, the the plan of the competition. You see, it, it was a suggestion. We, we really worked with well-known typologies of, of some metabolists and some uh, different, you know, Piet Blom houses and, and whatever. No, we, we did really a catalog of, of references we found funny. No, but the idea was to have really a, a game board on which. Uh, different players could play the city, no? That was the topic, no? So, so this is, these are a couple of images from the competition. So the project uh, in the competition, you saw we, we really, they, they were really, our clients in uh, the first meeting took this image and said, we have counted all the people who are here. No? And this means that everybody who lives here is on the street at the moment. So. Uh, the message was we need something much more dense. No? This was, in fact, a substitute of 
of, of one family houses, maybe a bit more, no? And we really had to give an answer to, 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 to a neighborhood which needed to reach a density of one square meter per square meter. So this is quite a lot. Now in Vienna, the, the common practice is 1.5, no? So, so we were really in this moment, they were focusing on, on one. It is also, I think it was better for this area. So we really began to play a bit this, uh, this game. So we imagined it in the competition as something which has had to be played in, in the future. But we began to, to play it through the development of the project. You know? So and we began to introduce this diversity, talking with different investors. You know? So for instance, the municipality of Vienna uh, decided to build through the, the municipality of Vienna uh, has some cooperatives, which are uh, somehow public and somehow they work as, as, as independent companies, but they are they do public housing, so, so they needed bigger structures. They cannot afford public housing with these little units. It's, it's not affordable, no? On the other hand, uh, we had also some, uh, our developer needed also some uh, elements which allowed uh, them to reach some proper balance uh, between skin, and volume in order to, to fulfill the regulations, the energetic regulations we have in, in Vienna. So we, we really had to, to, to work on this, but, but we were always thinking that a lot of people were able to, to do this. And, and it's really nice because we have managed really um, then to have a, a big diversity. This was just a preliminary study, but, but of many things that could happen here, always within the framework of, of a plan that is very important. No, I don't know if uh, you have visited uh, cities without a plan. No, I, I can remember uh, my visit to Mumbai, for instance. I don't know if, if there's some Indian student or somebody who knows it. I was living in Bandra. This is a neighborhood which was a, a one family house neighborhood made by the Portuguese uh, uh, traders no? and corruption actually uh, not now but, but some years ago there, there, there was a decade with a lot of corruption in which just the, the houses were just substituted by, by, by towers no? so, so you have a chaos no? in this case you don't have a chaos you have a controlled heterogeneity which is always responsive to the demand but which is always placing those new necessities within the framework of the whole so I think if we see it from the other side, so this is from the process, many things can happen. But also if we see the overall uh, tissue, we see that these elements begin to overtake also differentiated roles. I think it's important if we build all the time the same building or the same typology in a, in a neighborhood. <clears throat> it is like if we do a soccer match with a lot of goalkeepers no? so probably it is so defensive that it it is not completely wrong in the sense that you will not get any goals no? sorry soccer is our european sport i don't know in australia if this is a comprehensible reference but but actually but you you, you don't have uh, in in such a complex neighborhood you need different things so so you have this we, we put normally buildings in scales, like you know, in, in, in sizes, like the shirts and so on. So, so we have uh, things that bring density. We need density, but we don't want everybody to be living in a block beside the other. No, so we have density, but we have other elements which bring the opposite. They bring mm, uh, low density, also. No, so so they are two elements which can be. To, to ingredients which can be put into the same uh, place. Some others make references because they are taller. Some others like create the tissue because they really uh, shape the street. And, and then some others can overtake some specialized roles. We have here some elements which really block the, the noise from the train. Well, here we are much more open to the one family houses. No? So 
This is the idea, no? to, to have an heterogeneous uh, development, not only to allow this. I, I just show a couple of pictures. This is quite old, but it is the, the we don't have, as I told, you are the professional um, photos yet, because they, they, they just finished a couple of months ago. The Some sites, one site finished quite early. It was this one, but the other ones are finishing like since December, uh, they, are, they are finishing now, so, so we hope to have, but I will show some bad pictures sent by our client. We are also not allowed to travel there too much. So this is a little bit more recent. This is, uh, this is more or less now, what we have now already finished. No, we are not building the whole thing. I will not deepen into our housing project, but more on the, on the tissue, but we are building some of them here, 11 buildings. No? So, and what I was saying with these actors, we are really proud. This is not our architecture, but uh, this is made by a Viennese office, but they are building, this is one of the public housing. And I don't know if you have studied the, the history of, of uh, Austrian social housing, because they were like the pioneers, I think, worldwide, no? uh, doing public housing in, in a big scale. So uh, the Karl Marx Hof is maybe a concept for you. I like it because they really, uh, Karl Marx Hof initiated a, a program made by the municipality of Vienna in the twenties between the two world wars. And this program does exist yet, you know, and in our neighborhood, that is a, a successor of, of Karl Marx Hof of the same program, with the same, the same uh, building, uh, the same civil servants, I mean, the, the younger ones, no, of course, but the, the, the same people, the same institution is doing that. So we have public housing. And on the other hand, we have these small structures. This is a, a photo of one of the elements we have built. No, we, we, in this case, this is just really four uh, units now with, with a shared garden and then with this urban wilderness there. No, So, so these two scales are, are really beside each other. No? So as you can see, no, so, I think uh, that is that could be good or could be bad, not to, to have this uh, contrast. But I think uh, through the support, we have managed uh, really to uh, control the relationships. We don't want to control the objects. We, we we love that everybody does whatever they want, no? In in general, in life, but but also in in this architecture. But we want to control. Oops the relationships. No? So in this case, I think you see that we are able to, to, to let things live together, no? which otherwise uh, would really maybe be make difficult uh, difficulties no? of, of lighting, of, of also social contacts. We have quite expensive private uh, finance housing and the social housing, and they are uh, door by door together and it's, so far, it's working well, you know. So now I, I go for five more minutes into the, the free space, and I think this will be not. So, so then this is also very important what happens in between. You see here a plan which we kind of show more the green, you know, and you see not only the buildings allow in, in such a support infill structure, multiplayer structure, not only the, 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 the built allows a big complexity and heterogeneity and process, but also, or, or very especially, actually even more, the free spaces, no? So the idea was, I think, to create here, uh, uh, we wanted to go beyond a, a very bad thing, at least I think it's, it's a really problematic thing in our suburbs in, in Europe, is the dualism between private and public. This would be another, value no i we could add to the beginning reflection we have the fence and we have the private and then we have the public and if something does not belong to any of both it's normally completely uh, it's a wasteland no it's 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 a, that is the reality no so we wanted to thematize this third space uh, as as um, Gilles, uh, called it, for instance, no, but but this, this space in which uh, 
other things could happen which are neither public nor private. And, and there are two very important things which should happen there and should be present in any neighborhood. It is the common, this is very important, the common, and also to leave space for the natural ecosystems. Not to be, do a big park, that is also good to do to, to in, in the big planning, to, to make reserves of, of really land, but also to try to respect, maybe you cannot respect here, I don't know, uh, big animals, no? we, we cannot have wild pigs here probably, no? or, or for sure. No? But there are a lot of even protected species here of, of, of you know, these mantis or, or, or some, or there's a kind of hamster, which is, uh, proper of the Alpine area, you know, which is living, what's living here, no? and is living here now. So th through the construction, it was interesting because they did a reserve of, of land to keep all these species, no? and then uh, to let them reconquer the, the, the new grassland. No? So this in between space between the, the public and the private, I, I, I like, if I said I have a favorite diagram, I have also a favorite landscape project, this is really, Horrible, no? If you say, which is your favorite architect, no? Is the typical question, no? You should never answer, no? Because, but but I I, I can say I have a favorite landscape architect. This is Sorensen. This this wonderful project, no? In 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 Denmark, he was asked to do allotment gardens. Actually, uh, well, uh, the, the, this really he was asked to do the symbol of property, fences, and and little houses. And if he would have just done so, we would not be talking about it. Not, but but he went a step beyond. He, he could have said, "I want the commons." He would he would have done a, a green field, and and people would have been very happy. But it wouldn't have been interesting. But he went beyond, and he transformed actually the, the symbol of property, which is defense, into a space in which community happens. This is a wonderful place. No, this in between the fences in which a lot of things can happen. It is important that these spaces are not just a backyard. It is important that they can be leftovers. They can be just natural leftovers. It's okay. But it's important that they are planned as, as, as the common. No? So, so we like very much this project because it goes beyond like we like to do. It, it does not go back and says, no, we don't want property. If I want community, I build it with the values and elements uh, which I have now, no? Because otherwise I will do something which is uncomprehensible and, and will not be sustainable, no? So we began to work, I don't know if, if you see the changes, but on this in between, many things could happen from small appropriations to just nothing, no? If you say uh, it happens, not, nothing happens, so, the hamsters live there, no? it's also good, no? or even a park. No? So this creates at the end a, a big heterogeneity of spaces no? within this very rational support. Uh, a lot of different situations can begin to flourish. These are some pictures uh, taken, no, that is wrong, that is 2021, no? this was taken uh, some weeks ago. So some of this in between, is more public. This is, I mean, you have here, it's more fragmented and so, but we needed here really a, 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 an important passage, which is going to a supermarket. So, so it is more like a, a typical suburban public space, no? But in some other places, uh, you have these B sides in which just things uh, can happen, but it is also not bad if nothing happens there, no? The pictures, as I said, I will not say it again, but we like to show professional photos, but we don't have them. And I think it was what I wanted to show you because it's freshly finished. Or uh, this is in, in our part of the project, the, the part we, we built. We, we wanted to leave all that part really just as a, the, the, it's difficult to, to build this because they, they have really to, to bring all the different seeds of a mixed uh, grass it cannot be just you know the, the the grass you have in the private gardens and animals are uh, small animals are, are living here not only insects but also small mammals no? and it's really nice no or i love this uh, photo from last summer this was 
the first project, which which was the second project, which was finished. There. It's a, it's a co-housing project, which was attached to the to the first public housing project I showed you, and, and this is really great. No, but what I really like the most is to see all these uh, water. Uh, how do you say the water pipes? Or, uh, like coming from from the different more private situations in order to to appropriate uh, itself from uh, from this common ground. No, this is really uh, nice, I think. No? And a last word, I am I don't know. Jordi, say if I, I I wanted to just to finish talking about the process. No, this is uh, I like also the, this diagram which shows how the process of housing maybe in a primitive moment it was everything together to live in a place and to build it was the same no? but now it is not the same and, and also not to pay for it and also not to, to plan it and then and you have really a very complex procedure no? in which this ideal or, or primitive situation no? very romantic it's not possible no and this is of the 70s uh, uh, this diagram so that the process now would wouldn't fit into into such a, uh, a slide no so we focused a lot on the process no and and, and we managed to uh, use a lot of uh, collaborative techniques no we, we involved a lot of experts i have to say our client was uh, incredibly generous on on this help so so it was really it became somehow for, coming from this competition entry it became a, a very alive process in which really a lot of people were able to take place no? so to, to to take part sorry mm, uh, we had uh, of course landscape experts energy experts we had experts in co-housing we had the co-housing association of Vienna involved in the project, like telling, really introducing really interesting ideas in the planning. We had representatives of the of the neighbors uh, around. No, many of them, really many of them. That is what our clients said, have been uh, becoming now inhabitants of this area or their children actually the grown-up children no, are now because there was a lack of, of housing in the area and people like it very much this is on a, on a kind of a hill it's, it's a very uh, nice place no? so uh, this is wonderful because it began before the construction because before the the machines enter there to to build the streets and even during the construction uh, a lot of actions have been taking place there no a, a professional office was involved for this no? and, and they organized uh, workshops and, and whatever no so this was before the construction began they began to do of course information uh, actions this is already after the construction they do always this summer cinema this is in in the in the park we have left in, in, in this where these old director houses were no and and, and this is really uh, nice not this began to happen already before the construction began so that is nice that the social tissue came somehow in a small extent to a, in a small scale but it came before the the, the, the built tissue and that is really Nice. There is also this is the old this old uh, building farming building no mm, with with this interesting ramp no to 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 vaccinate the cattle. We thought it was related to a kind of, of for the tracks and so on, but it was to bring the cattle or, or the pigs actually no up there no. So but they transformed into a we transformed it as a proposal and then some colleagues of us did the renovation. No? It's a, a social center there, which is extremely active. No, it's not only a place which you can use, but there is a team also, no, which is contracted for ten years now, and then, then they will see, no, but which are activating uh, the whole thing. Also, the, the taking care of ecosystems. No, you saw before this picture. No, it's part of of the process. No, one of these persons in the social center. 
uh, is a biologist and is also, let's say, uh, monitorizing and taking care uh, besides other activities they, they do, but they are also taking care and they map where you can see some different things. No? They are now implementing, this is now a trend in Austria, everywhere, these little houses for the bats, no? because they, the bats are very much endangered in urban areas, no? so they are placing that. So we try to respect a lot of the old trees, but many of them, so the place of the trees is, many of them is the original place, but many of the trees were uh, were ill and, 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 and they had to, to cut them, they were old and they nobody took care of them for the past like 30 years. So it was a pity, but uh, many of these are. This is also interesting, no? this is actually, you don't see it, but this is uh, raspberry plants and strawberries and, and, and I don't know all these names in, in English. No? So you have a lot of public space there, which is full of this kind of small productive situations, but, but you are allowed to take it, no? and you're allowed to, people are taking it in, in big amounts to the marmalade and, and all these things. So, so, so we are very happy. No? And I'd like to finish, I think more or less a bit over time, but uh, with this strange myth, but, but I love it. It's a couple of years old, but this was uh, just a plan made by, made by the infrastructure engineers in which they were trying like to compile all the projects which were yet in 2019. We didn't even start a construction. Some, some others had begun and so on. And I like they were like doing this patchwork of plans made by different architects and different landscape architects and so on. And, and well, I don't know, I, I think it closes maybe with, with the first image, the Indian image I showed you, no? I think it is with a different scale. This is all just like, let's say stage one or, or the first act of, of, of this um, development, no? Not even the most important. We hope um, in the next 20 years, it will change a lot, no? Because that it will be a sign of, of life, but we like to, to see already the, the even the, the, the plans of this do look like something which is alive and, and, and which is continuously changing. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Luis. Thank you very much. It was an amazing uh, lecture and uh, you, it was really a uh, pleasure to see somebody so passionate uh, about what uh, what they do. So really uh, great stuff. W should we let you have a drink of water before we start with, uh, with, with questions and uh, just um, let you recuperate a little bit. Uh, to the audience, um, please forward your questions um, should you have them. Uh, sometimes audience uh, can be shy. We, we, we have uh, two questions so far, but please uh, go ahead and uh, continue sending your, your questions. It will be great to hear from students in particular. Um, before we start with, with, with questions, Luis, can I ask you to be uh, the ambassador for Europan and uh, tell us what Europan is actually and what is it about? I should have done it because I'm really, I feel in depth with it. So, I don't know, I was writing for European a couple of months ago. They asked some former winners to, to add some reflections because they want to renew themselves a bit. And I was thinking European is a lot of things. So, but European is, just to understand, it, it's a, a, a program of competitions. No? It's a competition, but which takes place at the same time in many different sites in Europe. No? It was a French initiative, but... Uh, it spread all over Europe. And actually it is restricted to young architects, you know, young athletes are young until 25, but young architects are young until 40 and even beyond, but, but I, I mean for Europe. And so this is a, a competition restricted for uh, architects under 40, which, uh, which is really nice because I think it is a positive restriction. No? And in which uh, this kind of complex urban situations are normally addressed in many different scales. So normally, let's say in every European 
uh, edition. Now there are, I don't know if, if you know it better, but maybe 40, 50 different sites sometimes, no? So uh, in Europe, in different countries, no? I think Spain has something like, I think, nine sites. Germany has normally also a lot. So Austria uh, has proposed three sites, no? And well, it's, it's a kind of competition in which, as I said, they take normally especially complex places in which cities or regions or, or more seldom private clients do not really know what to do there for some reason. Sometimes it's a social complexity, sometimes it's a spatial or, or processual complexity. And they demand really for innovative ideas you now with the uh, objective of, of really implementing them. No? This, this, it is not a student competition, it is for, for people who are graduated, but students are very welcome to participate within teams. No? For instance, uh, we were very good friends of, of one of my partners participated with us in the first edition as a student. No? He was my best student, so we took him <laughs> and, 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 and it was really uh, nice. So Mm, European is already 30 something years old. I was saying that uh, European, my, the title of my little text was European from the fall of the wall of Berlin to the COVID. No? So it began in 89. So it was a very symbolic year for, for Europe, no? uh, in, involving many changes. No? So it was the beginning of let's say a new era with not only positive aspects you no know, it was the, the explosion of of, of neoliberalist uh, desire, uh, development you no know, in in many countries of europe and so on and european was a critical voice there but 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 it's like like i like it's a critical voice within the debate not against the debate you no know? so and and well it has been i think it has been I don't know if I exaggerate, but I think maybe maybe not the, the, the main, but one of the main think tanks for architecture in Europe, but I think also worldwide, it has had a big influence. So many uh, innovations in housing plans, but also in urban concepts and in processes come actually from, from Europe. And many offices were built as European teams no? in Europe. I mean, very well known all these Dutch offices of the late 90s now, like MVRDV and, 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 and company, they, they come from Europe and no? or people no? uh, like come closer to Georgia, no? I was talking recently with uh, Robin Nirich and uh, he comes also directly from Europe and all this uh, Yugoslavian news no? in Slovenia also, no? I think, uh, uh, and I'm sure in Belgrad also not these people were people who were working in the in the 90s in Holland at that moment and they all made their teams through participating so I don't know if I'm taking too long but if you ask me to be an ambassador I think it's a great uh, program I encourage you it's also open for non-Europeans I think they have to be somehow in touch with a European member no, in the in the team but that is normally not a problem nowadays no before you had to write a letter and so on, but now I think it's working well. So it's really, take a look at Europe and it's a nice. Questions are coming through through the chat box, but I'll try to read them out or whichever way you prefer, Luis, so we can we can find a way uh, around okay, that. Okay, perfect. So there is, there's a really good one from Will, and I think it's part of the questions that could take us a little bit behind the scene to ask you about your work processes and how you go about things in the office. So what Will wants to know is, you have a very unique and playful visual style and color palette. Where do you draw inspiration from and what is the intention behind this? So, yeah. yeah. It's a nice question. We are asking ourselves all the time. So as we began our office, you know, uh, we, I don't know, we were young and we could do things without reflecting too much, but we really did a kind of, of, of commitment never to do 
photorealistic renderings. No, I don't know why, but <laughs> but it, we saw it was more a tool of, of, of fake and of, of 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 covering the ideas than of showing them. So so that was uh, just as a funny part of the answer. That was really something that was very important for us in the late time. We have been obliged to do photorealistic renderings because sometimes then you, you come into moments of the process in which that is not any more possible. No? So, but I think uh, what we like, even I didn't show today, let's say our architecture and our work uh, objects. This is also architecture, no? we don't make a difference. You, you saw some of the sources, but we really like to understand that uh, our role as planners is not so much the definition of objects, but the definition of the systems and, and the the uh, the structures which allow objects to to, to live in time. No, some objects do not change, but uh, actually any urban structure has to be a changeable thing. So I think we'll. Uh, I don't know if it gives you an answer, but I think behind our project there is always the intention to express more the system and more. I say system with a bit of fear because it was a word which was used too much in some decades before, no? But 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 you understand, no? The structure, no? Beyond the the project than the result. So we are very, very obsessed that our projects are not understood are understood as a result. So we don't want if you see this uh, project behind this project we have on the cover. I really don't care if, 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 if the ceiling looks like that or, or completely different. In fact, I want not to know it because I think in the moment in which I decide that I have made a mistake. So we try to uh, do things that do express real quantities, but which remain very abstract. So this is a, a kind of, of, of obsession. I fully agree. I think you have a, a really... Uh, your question shows that, that you you have uh, it's really important uh, how you draw things. So it's funny you can see this whole architecture of the late 70s or early 80s that you see it built and you know it was drawn in an axonometric view. No, you know it. No, you see you, you know all this kind of good postmodern architecture which was axonometric no or or whatever or, or you see i don't know let's go to or, or stephen hall couldn't draw in another way as he does with with these perspectives because it's it's a no or yes yeah, to, to very well known examples so i think we 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 like to do it like that no i think it had our drawings try also to express always that they are part of a process so that is why maybe this one for instance uh, looks quite like a video game somehow, no? In fact, we did the model we presented to the city was not a built model. They asked for a model and it was not uh, a physical model, but it was that video game I have sh briefly showed, no? So uh, that was probably a commercial mistake, I have to say also, because they didn't know how to begin a bit with that. But, but I think we think it was the proper thing. So I don't know, Will, uh, I think you cannot give an answer, but I think uh, that is a bit the idea behind all these things. Of course, we have also uh, wonderful uh, collaborators. We like to draw ourselves, but also we like to we let people who come to the office also to 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 give their input, no? And then there are uh, see in the process there are different uh, additions, no? To, to to the narrative, we, which we found very valuable. No? We have a couple of questions here along those lines. So the system, it's the word or the, the, the we architects like to use a lot and we use it in many different ways. Um, and it seems that it's coming across as an important concept in uh, what uh, uh, you do. Uh, in terms of um, uh, looking at uh, housing and understanding housing through typologies, it seems that your approach is cutting across well-established typologies. So one way of thinking of approaching a certain master planning, master planning exercise or architectural project would be that you look um, how many two bed, three bed and one bed apartments you can fit in a certain site. 
But what you do is uh, actually quite very different and um, you kind of use what we like to call here kit of parts uh, and you kind of uh, explode uh, um, uh, uh, known architectural topologies into a, a smaller bits. And therefore, what we find really interesting in your projects is that you are able to reassemble, this is a word that you've been using, um, uh, relationship between individual and collective, between public and private, between inside and outside. And uh, I wanted to tease out a little bit more from you on the process itself when you're creating this kit of parts that, that we're talking about. Uh, just uh, maybe repeating a few uh, key sentences from your, from your lecture for the benefit of students, just so we understand that process a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Of course, what I'm going to say now is, is something you say afterwards. I think processes, uh, this is before any methodology, have to be a planning process has to be extremely iterative, no? And then, and, and, and well, you have to spend a lot of time talking and then discussing concepts and trying to put them into paper and then coming back. No, I think that is. Just before anything, just more as a teacher also, no, I would say uh, students have to learn that uh, planning is not a one-way uh, line. No? So all these things that you see quite simple at the end are the result of a couple of months of reflections and trying. No, So you have always to have an idea and to draw it with real measures and then to go back and say, well, it does not look that good and to rethink the idea, uh, have a meeting and so on. This is just before, because I think it's important, no? Uh, we are slaves of, we were, you're the, you are much younger than me, but you still belong to the generation of, of people who read magazines, no? We were slaves of magazines, but the younger generation even, even, Worse, if I may say, I'm sorry, in the sense that we were already slaves of images, which showed the end result as if it was magically there, no? But you now, even if I exaggerate, no, you are you use a lot of Pinterest and Instagram to, to think about your praise. It's even <clears throat> more image-based. I want to insult, I also use Instagram and Pinterest a lot, but but I just want to say. If you see in a in a publication some hands like that, no, it, it was a time every competition had to have some hands like that, saying we are interweaving, no. So, and they have two simple things, and then two hands like that, and then the things appear interweaven. You cannot think that is the way it was planned. It is the way it is published, no. But uh, the way it was planned was with a lot of paper and a lot of tests. Okay, sorry, this is. I think it was important because we are in a, an academic context and you, you, you are learning. Mm. What I think in our methodology, uh, I will repeat a bit of, of, of what I have said, but uh, I think the most important concept for us is, so we are very much influenced, I have to say, I don't like schools of something. This is more a confession than a, Description, no? so, but we are very much influenced by the by the Dutch structuralists, no? who were really these minds like of people who were really able to create structures. No? Uh, you know, now they have recently published this wonderful book about Bakema, for instance, no? with his urban plots, or 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 of course Aldo Van Eyck, more focused on 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 this big building scale and so on. No? But we think. In our methodology, we are always looking for which is the element which is structuring, but which is able to allow a lot of degrees of freedom for the rest of the parameters. Now, this, this sounds a bit abstract, but actually, if you have seen, sometimes we test also, no? sometimes uh, in, in this Viennese project, uh, we use the garden, no? we, we do a grid of garden, we have a, a really strong structure, which becomes the framework of, of, of freedom. If you just do nothing and say everybody is free to do anything, uh, it does not work. No? You, you need the framework because otherwise uh, power structures will substitute your framework. And, and then, I don't know, you have, I like very much this Mike Davis 
a book about slums in which he uh, took all romantic away. No, he says, no, slums are not free dishes. No? They are extremely brutal uh, hierarchies of, of mafias, no, which substitutes the public actually. No, so that is what happens. So you need as a planner to give the structure, but you should test. So we test always, which is. The, the structuring element, I think it has to be culturally related to the to, to, to the place, no? Somehow, no? If you want to thematize or, or to the place or to the topic, if you want to thematize community or if you want to thematize in this kind, we wanted to, in this way, in this case, we wanted to thematize suburbanity, no? So as, as a topic, we want to go beyond it, but we want to make it a topic. So, so we take the garden. In, in the Swedish project, we, we take the square because we want to work on the <clears throat> on the community as, as the big topic. No, we have also worked with, with, with streets, which is much more conventional, and the, the result does not look that wild, maybe, but, but it's we think it's a proper on that case. And then uh, we look for so, so that is what, what we call the support like taking the words of, of Habraken, no? It's difficult to translate support. It seems very clear, but uh, to translate it in German is not easy, actually, because there are like five words to choose, no? So, so but, uh, and then we say there are two other layers, no? One, the second layer, which we place on that, is the, what we call the syntax or, or the, the, the rules, we could say, no? It's we like then we come to the typological element, not only for architecture, also for free space or for objects. And there we like to, 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 to think again these typologies as a system. We, we don't use normally, as you saw in the first example, I, I like it very much, but it was a very unmature project, but it raised a lot of questions for us. No, we use a catalog of fixed objects. No, we go beyond that. So we think in this second layer of, of typology, we want also to think in systems. We don't want to pump in, like, as you said, like, I don't know, uh, 200, uh, one room apartments, uh, 320, whatever. Sometimes if the competition is asking you that, you have to do so. No? But if not, we prefer to think of structures which can be adaptable and which can have as many bedrooms as you need. Normally, there are a lot of good examples of, of housing projects. I didn't bring any now, but there are much better than ours, no? Which really think of, of housing structures in which you can then decide how many, how you distribute the bedrooms or, or, or whatever, or if even if you call them bedrooms, no? Sometimes, no? You can also go beyond that. So we try. To, to create also an open syntaxis based on, on rules, which are some are typological, some are morphological, some do have to do with volumes, with, with the relationships of, of, of them. No? I don't have any examples now. And then the third layer, sorry, Jorde, I, I, I stop now because we have a lot of questions, and, and but it would be what we call the urban software. No? It's not only the software for the computer, but it's, it's the, it's to, 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 to take account that, that once you build everything, the city is by far not finished. No? There are a lot of things that you do not build, which are even more essential. What is more essential for a public space? That you design it or that four people begin to play violin in the middle. I think it's much better that people play violin than that you have a great... Uh, design of the pavement, really sincerely. No, so what is more important to have a soccer pitch or to have a soccer team? No, with the soccer team you can people play in in Brazil and in Argentina play in the highway. In Sunday they cut the highway and, and they play there. No, on the highway. No, so but without the team you cannot do anything. You can have you have a lot of empty pitch. So so that is the idea. So. That is another layer, and we try to bring that into the process. No? Yeah, there's a question here about um, green uh, open spaces in um, uh, Garden of uh, Project, but I think you've answered that just now, and also uh, with the final images that you show, it, you, we've seen how life has started to move into the project and how people are using those spaces. 
and how important the spaces between buildings are, are as, as well as those in, in the building. So I, I wouldn't dwell too much on that. We are running out of time. There, there are two really quick ones that we can do. Quark is asking, um, is there a book that you would recommend? And I would rephrase that question since you've showed us your favorite diagram, you've showed us your favorite landscape architect, would you be able to show us your uh, favorite uh, book? Okay. Uh, yeah, for conceptual thinking, okay. mm -hmm. I, this is difficult because there are many, no? not because right. I cannot think of any, but I, I would say regarding to this lecture, I probably it's, it's a common place, but I, I, I have known a lot of Habraken. I think Habraken was like the most written architect uh, in the late 70s, but uh, I think we can try to recover him. John Habraken, mm -hmm. the, the design of supports, I think it's called in, in English. No? I have it in Spanish. No? Or, or mass house in the design of supports. You know which uh, yes, one you course, can yeah, yeah. support. Um, I, I don't know. This is a common place, no? I, I don't know, but, but I think I, I want to give really secure tips. And then I would like to give another. This is the book which I give as a present the most, no? Because in Spanish it was very cheap. Also, I mean, it was affordable, no? So it is "Victims" by John Hedjuk, no? Do you know that book? Yeah, I don't that personally, is, but yeah, something that uh, maybe yeah, we can take more. Book. It was also very influential for us in the understanding of architecture as an object taken uh, farther as usual and creating those really a, a, a wholly new structure, no? victims. I don't know if I can write it here or... or... Okay. Yeah. Did you... Yeah, we'll memorize the victim, victims by Habraken, so we'll, we'll have it on the list. And the very final one, uh, Luis, for you is uh, Andrew McKinnon's question about the very first uh, diagram. So you, you've spoken how important it was to you. Do you mind showing that image again and just uh, concluding the, the lecture with, uh, with another look uh, at that diagram uh, that yes. we saw at the very beginning? Because with all of the knowledge that we have now, it might give us a new way of understanding it. Of course. Uh, this is a, actually... It is, it is not a famous place or whatever, no? This is a, from an academic work of, of this. She was a student at, at CEPT University in Ahmedabad, and she did this uh, work, this, this research, as her uh, final uh, master thesis, or, or I don't know how you call it there, but it, it was. So it's not a, a published project, no? I, I asked her long time ago, and we published it as an illustration in an article somewhere, but, but I think it's not easy to find, but I, I mean, I can give you the, the PDF of the lecture if somebody's interested. But I think it's, it's what I like, it's a completely anon anonymous architecture made by some, I, I, I can't exaggerate, I, I respect everybody and, and, and including architects, no? So I, I would say this is a, it was like some lazy, people who place this, but probably not. I think it's more intelligent that it looks like, but it's, the good thing is, but what the architects which I like here are the people who have made this, of course. But actually this is also an interesting structure, no? but I think it was not intended as an interesting structure because there are many examples. These were kind of, it, they were not prefab, but they were really tiny, no? you know? I, I think they were 12.5 square meter housing units because that was the minimum for social housing at that moment it was for the really low income no mm -hmm. so there was also the pressure you, you needed more space because in 12.5 meters not even students are able to live a long time in that small space no you know so uh, i think uh, it was funny so i, I cannot give you a bibliographic a bibliographical reference about it because I think it is not published beyond some articles as an illustration, but uh, well, we discovered it. I took it from the from this academic, uh, and and I like it. I think there are many examples uh, in India. Of course, they are very proud of uh, of Balkrishna Doshi's Aranya. No, do you know that project? I don't know who who asked the question. Sorry, 
It's, uh, uh, Andrew, no? Yeah, Andrew, Andrew, maybe you, you should take a look at Aranya. You know, I will write it here in the in the chat. Mm -hmm. Aranya housing, no? It, it is a project a bit in this. I don't know if did I did it right because I don't see the question, but the answer. But okay. Uh, ah no, I answered. Sorry, I answered only somebody. I don't know. Okay, we'll, we'll track it down, Luis. Don't worry. Yeah, my, my uh, zoom, yeah. okay. Yeah. This my is, is a. Running, so. You can take a look. It's a well known published project which also has thematized this, this kind of transformation made by a Pritzker Prize winner and so on. But Valkyrie uh, uh, a wonderful architect and a wonderful person. We were had the luck to, to meet often in India. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Luis. Uh, let's just take a moment to announce uh, uh, upcoming uh, uh, events on uh, MS at MSD. Uh, um, thank you very much uh, for, for your time. It was a really inspiring lecture and uh, thanks for being us um, uh, and uh, coming out of your holiday. It's uh, the time of holidays in, in, in Europe. Thanks again. Um, I will just uh, take a, a moment to announce um, uh, coming lectures. So the first one is Dean lecture, Dean's lecture series, and um, I'll try to pronounce it correctly, Kochakorn Bolrakom, um, uh, Water-Based Urbanism, uh, August uh, 10th. And then uh, after that, um, we're continuing with the um, uh, housing topic. Uh, we're talking to Marcelo Feiden, who will be talking about their recent work of uh, uh, Feiden Adamo uh, 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 and uh, uh, that will be on September 9th uh, in the morning hours because of the time difference. And uh, that's it. Uh, I would also like to thank um, ABP uh, events team, uh, Jet, uh, Phil, uh, T and uh, Sejen who have been behind, you haven't seen them, been behind the scene and have uh, helped us um, uh, make this uh, event happen. Luis, thanks very much again. And uh, we conclude here. We keep in touch. Thanks so much. Thank you.